Starship is definitely a name that's familiar to all of us. However, it should be noted that Starship is a system and potentially a family of vehicles. You could even call it the Starship Launch System, or SLS, that reflects its adaptability to go on various missions and accomplish different objectives. For the first orbital flight, SpaceX introduced a prototype of the crewed version. One of the flights planned for this year will be another variant, a naked Starship. So how will this Starship work? Find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX is now prepping its next Starship vehicle for upcoming flights. Recently, the company did an engine test at its Starbase site in Texas with Ship 25, the upper stage prototype that'll fly the next Starship test mission. Ship 25 completed a flight-like chill and spin of the Raptor engine pumps, stopping just before engine ignition. As a result of the test, cryogenic liquid oxygen formed a visible cloud beneath the ship. This checked out vital systems in advance of the upcoming static fire, SpaceX wrote in a Twitter post on Thursday, June 22nd, which also included an awesome pic of the test. Static fires are common pre-launch sites, in which engines are briefly lit while a vehicle remains anchored to the ground. SpaceX wants to launch that next mission pretty soon, perhaps just six to eight weeks from now, provided Ship 25 and Booster 9 check off all their testing boxes and don't get bogged down with regulatory hurdles. Regardless, even if Ship 25 has problems, there's still more interesting prototypes on the horizon with no flaps or heat shields. Enter Ship 26. It's four months younger than Ship 25 and rolled out without Raptors installed, and it still needs to pass several simpler tests. But that's not the only difference between the Starships. Aside from a range of smaller design changes, Ship 26 has three main differences stacked up to the more recent Starships. First, it has zero heat shield tiles. Since the 2020-2021 period of suborbital Starship flight testing, all finished ships, S-20, 21, 22, 24, and S-25, have all been fitted with around 10,000 black ceramic heat shield tiles. Eventually, those tiles will theoretically protect Starship from the intense heat that's created by re-entering the Earth's atmosphere at orbital velocity. Ship 25 also has no flaps. Since SpaceX first fully assembled a Starship in October of 2020, every ship the company's completed has four large flaps and form-fitting aero covers installed. Starships need flaps to steer and orient themselves during orbital re-entries. They also got to have the flaps to control themselves during those exotic landing maneuvers, which require ships to free fall belly down, sort of like a human skydiver, and then aggressively flip into a vertical orientation for the propulsive landings. Finally, and rather confusingly, Ship 26 has no payload bay of any kind. The end result is a smooth, featureless starship that looks like a steel bullet that can't return to Earth and that can't deploy satellites. All that combined, the fact it exists at all seems like an elaborate multi-month mistake. But SpaceX definitely wanted to build Ship 26 and is now preparing to qualify it for flight. Could this be a depot, a moon lander, or maybe something else? In simpler terms, Ship 26 is literally an expendable starship with no way to launch satellites. Which raises the obvious question, why does it even exist? There are a few possibilities for that. SpaceX is developing at least four types of starships. The crew and tanker ships will have heat shields and flaps. The starship moon lander will have no flaps or heat shield and will be painted white and insulated. A depot ship with stretched tanks will stay in orbit permanently and store propellant for in-space refilling. Based on low-res renders, the bullet-like depot ship is the most similar to Ship 26. However, there's no evidence that Ship 26 has exterior optical properties that are optimized for the long-duration propellant storage. The prototype also doesn't have any of the hardware that's likely needed for docking or propellant transfer and has propellant tanks that are the same size as the ships that came before it. To survive in orbit for days or weeks, it'll need some kind of power source, typically solar arrays, that isn't there. And even if an expendable starship like S-26 can already hit SpaceX's reported target of 250 tons to low Earth orbit, 250 tons is just a fifth of a full propellant load. With all that said, Ship 26 is definitely bound for more than just the scrapyard. Earlier this year, a bullet-like prototype was installed on suborbital Pad A, which SpaceX has modified for cryogenic proofing and structural testing. Ship 26 was pressurized and loaded with liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, or both to safely simulate the thermal and mechanical loads it'll experience when it's filled with propellant. 
the stand is fitted with hydraulic rams that can simultaneously simulate the thrust of six Raptor engines. And get this, the smooth Starship is not alone. It appears that Ship 27 will be more or less identical when none of those heat shields or flaps. There's also evidence that Ship 27 will have the first working payload bay on a Starship and could be used to deploy full-size Starlink V2 satellites, plus for any other testing SpaceX wants to use it for. The most exotic and unlikeliest explanation for Ship 26 and 27 is that the pair is meant to support SpaceX's first Starship docking and propellant transfer test. In October of last year, a NASA official indicated that SpaceX's second Starship test flight would be a Starship-to-Starship -Starship propellant transfer. For now, though, SpaceX's priority is gearing up Ship 25 and Super Heavy Booster 9 for Starship's first orbital launch attempt. Until then, Ship 26 and 27 will probably remain a bit of a mystery. Anyhow, what's your take on the fate of Ship 26 and 27? Hit us up with your thoughts in the comment section. But back to Starship variants. The Starship mission profile is somewhat dependent on the destination. More Starships will land on Earth than any other planet. In fact, for each Starship that's loaded to the gills with cargo and launched up into LEO, another eight or so are needed to completely refill its tanks for further flights. Each of these Starship tankers will transfer fuel directly because there aren't any gas stations in space, and then they got to return to the launch site for another load. Starship kind of has this superficial resemblance to the space shuttle with those stubby delta wings. Unlike shuttle, however, these wings don't provide any lift and they hinge along the body. Starship's designed to control its entry using a differential drag, sort of like a skydiver. It can angle its body to produce a small amount of body lift necessary to avoid sharp deceleration and heating in the lower atmosphere. Unlike Shuttle, which glided subsonically to an absurdly long runway, Starship will relight its core engines, then turn around and execute a propulsive pinpoint landing, just like a futuristic spaceship should. Since the Earth's atmosphere is nice and thick, Starship can slow down to perhaps 150 miles an hour before lighting its engines, requiring just a tiny amount of fuel to land. The Moon is a different story. Unlike Earth or Mars, it lacks an atmosphere, so it requires propulsive landing and the fuel to slow down from orbit. Despite this drawback, which in alternative architectures requires multiple stages to execute, Starship's able to fly significant cargo from LEO to the lunar surface, then back to LEO, all without having to refuel on the moon. This is super important. While converting lunar water to rocket fuel is all the rage right now, it won't be available for early missions, if ever. Oxidizer might be easier to get and, being four-fifths of the fuel weight, more worthwhile. Nonetheless, this graph right here shows how Starship, refueled in LEO and optionally boosted to GTO, could transport 150 tons of cargo to the moon and still have ample fuel to bring another 100 tons of cargo back. A LEO to geostationary transfer orbit refilling operation would require 15 tanker flights and would take about a week to execute from translunar injection burn to Earth and return. In other words, the baseline Starship architecture is capable of moving huge quantities of cargo to anywhere on the moon with little to no pre-placed infrastructure. Assuming a 35 kg LEO launch cost, cargo could be delivered to the moon for perhaps $500 a kilogram. Sounds like a lot, right? Especially when the cost of shipping anything in a container anywhere on Earth is about 10 cents a kilogram. But $500 a kilogram is comparable to the cost of specialty industrial equipment, which is a decent baseline for the cost of lunar customized gear. In other words, for the first time in any lunar mission reference architecture, the shipping cost could be a minority of the total cost. Next, let's consider Mars. Mars is the grand goal for Starship, although Starships that go to Mars will probably be a bit more customized. While the Moon takes about three days to get to, Mars takes four to ten months. Launch windows to Mars only open up every two years, so even if Elon has a thousand Starships ready to go, they can only go every two years. If there's lots of fuel available on Mars, they could possibly return in time for the next launch window. But even so, two years is a long time to wait for a reusable vehicle that depends on a high flight rate. Starships got to refuel on Mars from locally produced methane and oxygen just to get back to Earth. The economics here shift so much that some people even advocate employing Starship as an upper stage alone. Under this model, Starship would boost some Mars-bound payload onto the appropriate orbit, then turn around and come back to Earth, ready to fire off another payload as soon as it's refueled, maybe even just a week later. A system like that could employ a Starship 100 times as much. And that'll do it for today's episode. Please share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.